Evening everyone, Cliff here in my shed. I've been a bit busy lately, um, mostly personal stuff, which I won't bore you with. So I ain't been able to get any videos out or anything. I ain't been able to do much of anything actually. But um, anyway, to cut a long story short, uh, a customer sent me back one of his punches because he had damaged it and I've repaired it. And I'm just about to test it and I've got some coin rings to make. so. I thought I'd punch the holes in that and test it and I thought while I'm doing it I'll just do a, a little update purely on punching the holes in the coins. So this is the um, punch set in question and it's the number three set that I do. It, uh, it put, well the punch had gone in at a bit of an angle and caused a bit of a burr on the bottom half of the punch but I sorted that out and now I'm going to test it. So there's just a couple of things I want to go over in case anyone's got one of these or is thinking of buying one. There's not much to them really, I mean you've just got the cap and the base, the spacers and the number 3 punch comes with a 15, a 12 and a 10 mil punch. Nothing much to note about them except that the black sleeve I always mark which is the bottom on them now and that has to go in so that it's at the bottom of the punch if you are using the smaller punches. I mean, the reason for that is, as like the body, the uh, top has got the 15mm, it's bored out to 15mm and then it's taken out from the back up to just short of the top, slightly bigger so that the slug falls out. It, I didn't do that on the very original ones I ever made and you had to hammer the slugs out but by doing that by just taking a little bit out from the bottom up to the top basically tapering it slightly when you've punched it the slug just falls out the bottom so that, I mean that's the only thing to note really on the, the punches and obviously you've got the spacers so I will normally do when I'm, I've got a couple of half crowns here to punch and I've got to do a penny as well. The first thing I'm going to do is select the ring that best fits the half crown I've got. Now the, these are both 60s crowns, half crowns, so the chances are they'll be the same size. thing is with a lot of coins they're not going to be identical sizes even though the sort of published diameter of a let me just go and get me calibers yeah so the published size will be 32.31 and as you can see this one is 32.06 this one is 32.17 and if I have a look so this is an older this is a 1939 which has got a lot more silver content and if the camera picks that up it's just about 31 point ever so slightly under 32 so the coins are never going to be exactly the size you want or the size they should be the other thing i would just point out is we look at that one that's 32.02 there if I turn it around 90 degrees, it's 31.97. I mean, the point is, they're never perfectly round either. Consequently, they may fit in more than one of the spacers. I'm just going to put this silver one back, that's for another job. Now, this is the pile of spacers. They're, um, they're 3D printed, now they should be approximately until you get to this very last one which is really just for a, the dollar bit. They're supposed to be about half a millimetre apart around the sort of common sizes but they do come out slightly different sometimes. <clears throat> so what I'd normally do is just drop a coin on it, in it, on it depends on what you're doing, just take them off I'll we'll try and take another one, it will take the coin. So just take the ones off that it won't come out of. 
and that's just won't go in that one. Yeah, it fits fits okay in that. It's a little tiny bit loose in that one. But if you get a coin that is ever so slightly loose, you can just get a bit of tissue. This might be a bit too close for this, it might go in there. I don't know. And just press it in like that. And tear the tissue off just to make it a tight fit. <clears throat> but to be quite honest with you, this one is it's good enough to for what we're gonna do. So that just goes, the spacer goes in the recess. Coin goes in the recess. Now I think it is important, especially when you're starting out, to keep the base on a level surface and screw the top down. Now the reason I say that is because it can, if you if you pick it up and do it and you turn it or anything, there's a possibility that the coin may come out, it'll end up in there like that. You won't realise, I mean once you get the hang of it, you, you, you'd feel, probably feel the difference. But if you keep it all flat until you've screwed it right down, and just have a look down the hole, just to make sure that the coin is down there flat. Now tighten it up. Now you don't have to put it in a vice and use a pair of Stilsons on it, but you do have to do it up pretty tight. And that will hold it in place. And then it's just whatever punch you're using. This is gonna be a 15 mil punch and over to the press. Now the question I get asked more than any other question is whether, you have, whether to anneal a coin or not, or how often to anneal it. Personally, I, I anneal them all the time. I, I always anneal them before I punch them. I anneal them quite a lot when I'm making the coin. It takes a bit of time, uses a bit of gas. But I think it's, it's better to do that. And this is just my opinion. Because I think it puts, not only does it make it easier to work the coin, but I think it puts less stress in the coin when you are particularly punching it. But just for this demonstration, I haven't annealed any of these at all. So we're over to the press with an unannealed half crown and this is the way I would normally press punch a coin. Right, so I'm at the press, the coin's in there and I'm gonna punch the hole. So, I'll get the ram down just so that it's taken up the pressure. I'm going to move that a bit, get that in the centre. So now we've taken up the pressure on the punch. And I'm just going to give a couple of squeezes. That's probably about one and a half. Now it's nowhere near punching through yet. Now I'll take the pressure off and turn the punch about a third of a turn and then do it again just take up the pressure and then give it about one one and a half presses because what that's doing the angle of the cutter is now beginning to cut that coin take up again turn it another third Go again. And that's it. It's gone through on the first punch on this. And there we are, the coin's punched. Now, the, one of the reasons I do that, do it in three or four small stages with not too much pressure, there's, there's a couple of reasons and this is only what I believe. I think, that the coin gets less stressed 
by doing it that way rather than the way I'm going to do it next and it doesn't go quite so far through the punch either through the punch doesn't go quite so far through the coin and then they're a lot easier to knock off the punch right so let's do the other one and we'll go gung ho at it wrong way around again the coins not on yield so although I advocate annealing all the time it's not always absolutely necessary it's just that I prefer to do it I prefer to anneal it I just think it makes everything a bit easier there's the slug from the one I just popped out like I say they just fall out if you um, because of the taper in them right so this one I'm just going to go for it I'm not going to turn it I'm just going to give it some and whack it through right you get a lot louder bang next door's cat now thinks the farmer's about to shoot it and then I'll bring it around the front there's the slug I'll bring the camera around the front and we'll take that one out and I don't know whether you're going to remember the last one but it's gone a lot further through the coin punch this time try and get them back in order it's a lot harder to get off the punch but that got it off now I think the reason why it's much harder to get it off the punch when you just go gung-ho at it and bang it right through and this isn't a scientific fact not that I've proved anyway but I think the coin probably gets a little bit hotter as it gets pushed pumped as the punch goes through then shrinks pretty rapidly and is tighter on the punch and it goes further up the punch but both of these coins weren't annealed and it's quite possible to punch them without annealing them my next move would be to remove the little burr you get on the edge and then start folding it well I've got to go on and do this penny and I've got to knock these into um, into rings so I'm not sure I've made myself very clear on why I think it's better to take it much more slowly and to anneal the coins before you punch them one I believe anyway from my sort of experience if you just go gung-ho at it and bash the punch straight through in one it just put loads and loads of pressure on your on your press until it bangs through I think it just puts a lot more stress into the coin all over it just stresses the metal out a lot more and you're a lot more prone I think to getting splits in the coin when you are working it and with the one that I took three hits at it's a much gentler operation altogether and I think it just puts less stress on the coin and I believe whether I'm right or not that you get less splits and less problems with the coins 
if you take it a bit easy when you're punching punching the hole. But like I say, that is just my opinion. But anyway, hopefully you'll take something away from that and I'll see you on the next one. Mr T, your punch will be in the post back to you tomorrow. Fighting, rearing to go. Mine, there you go. See you in the next one. If anyone has got any, um, if anyone wants to see a video or anything of a particular operation or wants any advice, just email me or drop a comment in the comments and I'll see what I can do. Mine, there you go. Bye for now.